afternoon, everyone. It is Friday. It is Trek for Paddock. It is time for Houses Brew. We've got Jay. All right. How are you, mate? You okay? I'm all right. And we've Good got laugh. Nicky Welsh. Nicky uh, used to play for United, came through the academy. Um, and if the last five minutes of off air are <laughs> anything <laughs> like what the next hour is going to be, this might be the best podcast we've ever done. Uh, Nicky, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks us. for having us. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be the best ever, but. Uh, oh, yeah. mate, oh yeah. well, the way this has just started. Yeah. It might be. <laughs> so, give us that book, Jay. Right, yes. so Nicky's just dropped a book, which is uh, My United Road. And. Um, I think let's just start with who was the first to read it, Nicky? Well, it's a bit of a name drop here, but it's, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson was oh, the first. Good, yeah, he was the first to read it. It was a bit surreal, really. Um, I want everyone in the book who's told stories as a, a prove what they're about. So I wanted him to check it first, and he said, I'll, I'll take it on holiday with me, which I was dead surprised about. But I only had it on my PC, the, um, the actual book. So I, like, I was working down in London, so I actually got hold of this place in King's Cross and said, can you do a book for me? And they said, yeah, no problem, I've done for Thursday night. Went and picked it up and they'd, they'd done it one-sided A4 paper. So, I mean, look how thick the book is there, but it was like an, it was like the yellow pages. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can't believe it, you know what I mean? I've lost my chance. So I got back up to Manchester the next morning. He was going away on the Sunday and I got on, on sort of the internet and had a look and said, um, found this one near Salford University. And I said, can you do a book? And he went, no chance. I'm stacked out for two weeks. So I said, well, are you a United fan? And he went, well, put it this way. My granddad played for uh, Newton Heath Locos. <laughs> so I went, well, this book's for Alex Ferguson. He went, you're joking. He said, I'll work through the night. Quiet. So See, he did it through the night. work sometimes. Yeah. Well, just a little bit, yeah. And it was <laughs> like a little Bible, little black Bible. So I got it to him. Um, and then he took, he took it away and then he... Um, he came back to me and went, it's a great book, it's got to go out to the fans, because I was just getting it done for family and friends initially. If I if just ask you, Nicky, because some people may be sort of like wondering, right, what the, the sort of difference with this book, because obviously this is about your United, you know, your United fan who yep. was in the academy as well. Just tell, explain a little bit about what the, what the book is about for people who are about The book's curious. about, well, I call it the first love of my life, which yep. is United. My first memory is in a United kit as a two-year-old. Um, got on the pitch in the second division in 74, got a piece of turf, put it in my back garden. Um, start going to the games, and I was a fan, and I was obviously not bad at football. Um, bit, bit modest there. Yeah. Not bad at football. Played for United, not bad. Yeah, you're yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, my headmaster <laughs> used... I'm not bad at drinking rum. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the headmaster used to say, oh, you're going to captain Manchester United in England and all that, so you'd like the captain of your team, and then you'd go through. And then it was always my dream to play for him, even when I got on the pitch there to get the turf. I remember looking up at the cantilever thinking, I want to play on it, you know, so... Yeah. Um, and then luckily enough, I got scouted and asked to go to the cliff, which was dreamlike for me. Even that, at 13, I was going like putting the, the kit on and I'm like, put it on my shoulder and looking at the badge and then managed to get uh, a YTS apprenticeship. Um, so me, I was up the ladder again and then got a year professional and I'm thinking, oh, I'm on my way. And then they realized the uh, enough's enough and do it, big rum, let me go. <laughs> But it was like the end of the world for me. I'm thinking, what am I going to do now? It's not in the not in the script list. So um, some big names there at the time, weren't it? You was in the same massive side yeah. as uh, Mark Hughes, as yeah. uh, Norman White, Sparky side. and Norman and Clayton, yeah, Billy Garton. They were like a year older than me. David Platt, Alan McLaughlin, who played for Ayat. There was yeah, some yeah. great players, you know. And Lee just, Martin, Lee Martin. I mean, you were yeah. just talking then before we started about. You know, David Platt, you just mentioned him. He got yeah. released. He was uh, the same day. I started, he started the same day as me and, and got released the same day. Yeah. So standards obviously, obviously very, very high. Yeah. What I love about this book, though, it's not just about your time at the academy. And obviously, you know, there's a part no. of that. But you're a diehard United fan, well, proper what? diehard United it, fan, it, and this comes through. And you're, you know, it, yeah. you talk about going to the game, supporting the team, yeah. and, and that. And it tells a story almost of United over five decades. It was. It was like getting on the stage behind the curtain. Yeah. But I was sweeping the stage in a way. But <laughs> they all, be, they all became my mates. So I'm going out drinking with Robbo and Sparky and Norman and Paul McGrath. Are you still here to so tell the tale? You've done well there. No, I had a, it's a great apprenticeship in boozing, I've got to say. <laughs> that's, that's some, some apprenticeship, that, isn't it? Right, I've covered this with a few people, and I covered it with, with Robbo. I interviewed Robbo about yeah. it. Robbo said they didn't used to train on a Wednesday. Yeah. They used to train on a Tuesday morning yeah. and then a Thursday afternoon. Yeah. He goes, so that was 48 hours of drinking you could do. Yeah. What? So That's you right. went drinking for 48 hours? Well, you'd go, f I probably couldn't keep up with them, but I'd, and I went in the first team, you know what I mean? So you don't get your day. I was there cleaning their boots while they're right. having. No, but I'd go out on a, on a Wednesday session, but Big Ron used to say, as long as you're in 
two nights before a game, that was in your contract. If you were out two nights before a game, you got fined and no one did it. No, none of them did it, you know, but that, as I say, them two day stints, um, we used to go in, I mean, it wasn't just United. The, I remember Alan Hansen and um, a couple of Liverpool players came to Paddy Craven's pub one afternoon. You know, the other clubs were doing it. It was part and, part and parcel of football, really. Yeah. Obviously, when you were there, you worked with Eric Harrison, I believe, as well. Eric was... The famous coach who oh. is probably well known, best known by a lot of our audience yeah. and United fans as being the, the coach of the class Unbelievable. in 92. And they all, as I say, Beckham, Sparky, I mean, Sparky took him to Wales as his assistant. Yeah. They all say he was the best coach. Developed gigs there. They all say he's yeah. like, he was, and he only played sort of, I think he played for Halifax and Barrow. But it wasn't just his coach. His coaching was brilliant, but he was just dead simple in what he'd, he'd teach you. Yeah. And they all say it, just little. I mean, he John used never to. actually heard anyone talk about him as a coach. More as just a mentor. Or a like mentor, that. yeah. Yeah. But he did do the odd thing. I mean, he, the one that he, he taught everyone, and you've seen Scholes do it better than anyone, was when the ball came to you, just look over your shoulder. And it was like so simple. Little so obvious, like, yeah. but little ones like that don't turn your back when you go into a challenge. And yeah, the lads on the telly now, if if they turn the back, they'll nah, you don't. If you get it in the face, or so it was like stuff like that that was. I went to an event once with Gary Neville and Eric Harrison. It was like a coaching thing in Barry, yeah. and Gary Neville was talking about it. Eric Harrison was there. And Gary Neville was re- could tell he revered him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He was just yeah. like in an awe of him almost. It was just like so respectful, and yeah, and it was great. And this was only like a few few years before, was like well about. Probably about 10 years ago, this actually. Yeah. But yeah, you can see how Eric Harrison was just so respected no. and obviously his achievements as a, as a coach. Amazing. But as a as a fan, being uh, being playing yeah. for United as a, a county yeah. player, what's that like? Because obviously... Oh, it's fun. It's fun. So you life. say the dream. That's what our dream, but we're just well, not, we're not good say, enough to do it. Some of my mates, as I say, Billy Garden's <laughs> one of my best friends. He, yeah. he actually played in the first team and that was like the ultimate, you know what I mean? He... Um, but yeah, just to get on Old Trafford and play at Ellen Road and Derby County, and it was it was just it was amazing, amazing time in my life. But as I say, it came to it came to an end when Big Ron said, ah, we, "We can't wait forever for you." And um, and I, I actually said to him, and I don't mind saying that because I say it in the book. And Chris, Christopher Eccleston, um, he, he's done the audio book, and he actually got upset when he read that part because it is I have bared my soul really. But yeah. I, I said to him, "No, don't do it. I'll come back next season. Just give me eight eight weeks. I don't even want any money." I'll do it and, for free. Like, yeah, I'll do it for free. You know there's more to come. I had an injury. And, yeah. And but that's know. all of us, isn't it, that? Yeah. All of us would. That's will, you, will you come for United for free? That's yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, of course. Exactly. I'm on my way. Yeah. But he said, that said to me, I can't, it don't make it any harder than it is. I mean, it must be hard for the managers to release lads as well at like 18, 19 as well. I bet a lot of them fucking burst into tears as well. Yeah, or you go, I'll prove you wrong. Yeah. But, I mean, some of the lads are not United fans, are they? I mean, some, a lot of professional footballers, it's a, it's a, a job to them and I'm not saying it doesn't matter who they play for, but it's a, it's a living, isn't it? But to me, it was like, it wasn't a living, it was just me, in my own head, it was my destiny. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you obviously, you mean, you know, I don't want to keep repeating, but you, it comes through about how much of United fan art you are. And when you left United... You went, was it West Brom then, wasn't it? Well, I, I, was, I didn't want to play, but actually. That, but I'm, yeah. I was going to say, because in yeah. the book, you sort of, you, you're very candid. I'm not yeah. giving away any secrets there. Yeah. In the book, you, you, you know, there's one point where you say, I think you're talking about playing in a West Brom reserve game, and you say, I, I gave my usual half ass performance. Oh, That's yeah. how you describe it, because yeah. You, yeah. your heart's not, yeah, not pr- there. Pretty average. Yeah, <laughs> but was, no, but I had, um, I had a little pipe dream that, like, Nobby took me, took me there, and Johnny Giles was manager, and I thought, what if Big Ron has a wobble and they sack him? They, these could actually get the job. Yeah. And always the dream in me, I'm like thinking, well, they signed Brian Robson and Remy Moses. They could sign me back. You know what I mean? I actually believe that. It was, that happens. Well, it does happen, but as I say, yeah. it, it didn't happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't blame me thinking, I've got a real dream. I don't want to play five a side. Maybe the yeah. yeah, scout will come. You well, know, I'm only 37, lucky. Jay. Exactly, I'm only 41. They might need Gigs a, you know, 40, a you defender. Know, I'm not closing the door <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty reasonable when you're 18 at West Bromwich Albion. Um, what was it like working with Obby? Oh, brilliant. And he lived in Sale, um, so we used to travel down daily. Yeah. So he'd pick me up in Altrincham there on the top road, and he had this old princess car, um, and he's blind as a bat. I mean, he's a lovely guy, <laughs> and, he had, and he sat there low in his seat. And he could only just see him, and he used to, like, put his glasses on every 10 seconds, and he'd be telling me stories, because I'd, like, think the night before, right, I want to find out about Duncan Edwards, or I want to find out about Bestie. What a treat, by the way. I, and it was I like... It was right. a, well, you'd be loving it to, love to be oh, stuck in traffic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But <laughs> Take your time. Go on, as you were. Yeah. <laughs> no, he did. But as I say, he's blinding the bat. And one of these particular games, which is in the book, 
And that's, I wanted to know about the European Cup final 68. And he started t- saying about Johnny Ashton, how he stopped the Benfica fullback coming forward. And he started on, on the, the, the Mr. thing, he started doing it. And this lorry's coming towards us. And I'm like, fuck. I'm <laughs> like, fucking Grab knob it. <laughs> Just get us there safe, will you, mate? I don't care about the European Cup because he was, uh, but oh, it was the, the best memories ever with him. And just such a... I mean, I used to wait outside St. Pat's in Collius when I was a kid too. Yeah. And I was at my nana's and wait for him to come out, you know. So it was dead weird to be in the car up and down the motorway every day. And I mean, he, as I say, talk about Edwards, what a great player. And he, Pele, everyone. I, I asked him about everyone. So it was... I, I, I want you. Well, it's, it's like a Q&A, isn't it? But yeah. it from, I had that for weeks and weeks. And Beautiful. I knew better as well because played against them or with them or you know, yeah. or at the academy these, when they were there or whatever. There's two people on his level. Was it? Yeah, that have won European Cup and, and a World Cup. They're For English. And yeah, a, but only... No, and only a man Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and, and only well. one of them played should in the final. Be, should have been so... so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Saying, I think. Yeah. Got a yeah. street auntie named after him in Collier. <coughs> yeah, yeah, just that's off Lizard Street. Yeah. That's, not yeah. that's not enough. He should have been a sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, after, just, we'll start off talking about a little bit about you. Obviously, you was at West Brom, and then you, like you were saying, uh, your heart probably not in it as much as it should be, and you were going to Malaysia, yeah. which is a colourful chapter in the book. Uh, well, I'm told <laughs> it's comedy gold, but it is. <laughs> it is, pretty, it is. Well, I, it got, is. I got our notes, and I was like, wait... Yeah, no, it's <laughs> like it, it, if the in between has had a football, I think yeah, that was me. I can't that write. There's so, like, <laughs> like, honestly, if you've not, like, we're going to talk a lot more about it, but check it out and check out the chance <laughs> on Malaysia because it's like this has got to be the only type of football book I've read where you get that sort of stuff in it. It's just well, absolutely not many people comedy gold write books and laugh at themselves. Yeah, it? well, you did, honestly, it, Nicky, like, it comes through. So it's, it's, it's not about, it's not an ego thing, it's a laugh. And, a, and John Ludden, who, who helped me write a ghostwriter, who's a fantastic writer, you know him. Oh, he's prolific, isn't he? John Ludden, he's like, unbelievable. And he United. put that. He put the huge. I said, let's let's make people laugh, John. Let's, well, like, this, this this book's about fun. I mean, there's some sad things in it. Obviously, the Munich stories and yeah. it, um, the Alzheimer's. But as I say, there's a lot of it, it's fun and it it's making people laugh, and that's that's important. Yeah. Two words, lady boy. Right. Is that not one word? <laughs> I don't know, actually. That's a good point. Well, it's not in the comments. Let's find out if anyone knows <laughs> out there. We don't. We don't. Uh, really Kai Tai, they call them out there. Can't, there you go. You see, cultural on this Kai show. Tai, hey. Really? We've got a question off Cab and says, uh, this is interesting to hear. I've got a question for Nikki. Was everyone comfortable with the drinking culture in those days or was anyone ahead of their time saying, nah, I'm going to eat pasta yeah. and... Yeah, they were, well, Arnold Murian came to United and he, he didn't like it and he couldn't believe it because not only that, you'd, you'd be drinking and Teresa, who was the, the, the chef, uh, the, the cook in the, in the canteen, an Irish lady, lovely lady, every Friday was fish, chips and mushy peas and jam, roly, poly and custard. That was so. That's the day before a game after being on the keg all for like two or three days, and he couldn't believe it. Arnold Murin, um, Frank Stapleton was a little bit the same that he was. He looked after himself, but the mad thing was that Robbo was always the best player, yeah, and the first in all the runs in training. Norman, unbelievable every game. Paul McGrath, Kevin, you know, they were yeah. all the best players. So it didn't really affect the performance, in my opinion. That's. So I asked Robbo about that when it's yeah. with the drinking, and he said, "Well, I was always first in the runs." And the, but is it like, all right, yeah, but they was all doping in Tour de France. Doesn't mean <laughs> no. I think, like I say, I mean Hansen um, and the Liverpool players came. Um, they were doing the same. McDermott, who apparently he's the, one of the biggest drinkers. You probably not want know these lads. I know you. So yeah, 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 I'm not. I'm not unfortunately, I'm not. It wasn't just Manchester United, <laughs> but everything is highlighted at United, isn't it? Yeah. You know, on anything. So it was. But, I mean, it, as I say, the great lads, though. Great team. Yeah. Well, I can imagine the team spirit when you just go in a sesh every day. Yeah. Well, twice a week. Yeah. For for a full day, because yeah. I was like, you need to explain it to me in detail because I'm thinking. But you're going out clubbing, and, and it's like, no, he goes, you should just go to Paddy's pub yeah. and just sit in the same spot for like a day. He did. And Paddy would go to bed and say, just leave your money on the, the side, lock up. <laughs> hey, do you know what I mean? This is why things were better before phones, yeah, because yeah. you can't do that yeah. now. I was just saying that story before. When I went, we went to, um, we played Liverpool in the semi-final at Goodison, the first semi-final FA Cup. And all the reserve players, youth team, and the ones who weren't actually in the starting eleven, 
or could take a guest, but it was kicking off before the, the match. It's not in the book, this, because right. I didn't. Well, this is I'm an exclusive. We couldn't, we go. Go. We couldn't Do you know what I mean? We couldn't get the United coach. I mean, Denzel were ruining the diet. Some of the directors were on it as well. It was like, and we couldn't get down. It was that bad, the trouble. Yeah. And we got off, and you had to sort of fight your way through. And I remember Gordon McQueen belting a scouser. <laughs> And I remember saying a few years later, do you remember that at um, Goodison and all that? And you had Big Joe. He said, did you not see Big Joe? Not one of them. <laughs> now, there's no mobiles. There's no CCTV yeah. then. Just but a scouser telling his mate on the way home. Was, I got headbutted by Joe Jordan. Going, Shut yeah, all right, right, mate. Of course you did. It was, <laughs> he's broke your nose, Joe Jordan. Of course he has. It was, I mean, it was pretty, it was tougher on the pitch, wasn't it? But yeah. it was tougher off the pitch as well. I mean, that's crazy. Imagine that. Imagine the, the coach pulling up now, them getting off and like, well, I mean, do you know, I remember Denzel LaRooney had this camel overcoat with one of the directors right. who was Louis Edwards' brother-in-law, I think. And I remember a lad, because he'd like got on his toes, he was quite old, and the lad grabbed him and said, stand. <laughs> he was petrified once. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I said, come on, Denzel, get off here. But, yeah, it was uh, mad times. But. Mad times. But you sort of, even after you've left United, you've always been friends with people at United. You've been friends, you've kept, you know, yeah. those relationships. Yeah. And, and everyone seems to like, you seem to get on with everyone. To be honest with you, Nicky, and yeah. everyone sort of respects the fact that you know you're not just yeah. a, an ex player, but sure. uh, United fan. And how important was that to you to have those relationships still? Oh, well, lovely, and my genuine mates. That was a yeah. say, big norm spark. I mean, they've all supported the book brilliantly. Yeah. Had the photographs taken, said, What can I do? I mean, obviously, there's, there's some of the money going to dementia, and uh, yeah, um, no, but great. A couple of lads came on today who not it spoke to for years, you know, it, it's uh, it's nice, but it is a, like a family thing. It's like if you bump into someone from who's your mate at school, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Whose boots did you used to clean? Robo's. Oh my God. Oh, mate. Stop so, it. and he was the same. New Balance ones. Yes. Yeah, New Balance. Oh. So, I've got, there's a, there's a <laughs> clip actually on the on the, on the the website, on the United, my United Road web website. It was, it was on News at 10. It was our first day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. And, and I'd be like that sometimes, and I'd be cleaning them, and they'd, they played in the Chariot Shield, and all the mud would be coming. I'm thinking, oh, it's Wembley's turf. <laughs> that, you know, and I was like, proper. But it was great. It was <laughs> it was fantastic. It was great. It's just, I, I feel fortunate to have done what I did. I know I did nothing, but just to no, get it's behind. Not, I don't think yeah. playing for United Academy is, no, is doing nothing. But you, know, but you were saying earlier, weren't you, that like the amount of kids that would, weren't even apprentice, apprentices and the amount of kids oh, that didn't get offered a contract. I see, mean, it was so, there's so many, yeah, so few that actually got offered a deal. I remember Gary McAllister was at, um, came to the cliff and he didn't get taken up. But you'd see lads from Glasgow or Dublin think, what a great winger he is. And next week he's gone home. You're thinking, wow, he was a player. Yeah. And yet these lads with respect that have gone on and, and done brilliant and you're thinking well there was other players better but as I say it's it is a long ladder and it's um, as I say good luck to the ones that do it but I think the really good players your white sides and your, your Roonies and your gigs I think they're then at another yeah that's 16, 17 yeah and I think yeah yeah the cream rises to the top with the really top players you know yeah it's funny isn't it now because all these records coming out like with Mason Greenwood and teenage goal scoring and, and, and all this sort of stuff and you look at non because it's all Premier League, but if you actually go back further behind the Premier League, look at non white size record. Yeah. By the time he's 18, he broke all the <laughs> and, records. And you know, it's ridiculous. He had, um, right. he, he had his cartilage taken out when he was 16. He was a sprint champion before that. Imagine. And, I mean, what a player. But then they brought Keel surgery out, I think, six or six months later. So Same imagine one. what he would have been like with speed. Uh, that, so. that is the complete player, isn't it? Done at six, 26. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mental. Is, but he ran with a limp when you see that cup final goal in 85. He, he, he has a bit of a limp because that was, that was from the operator. He used to have it in a little jar and he used to live near, off the avenue in Sale. He'd be in his jar, in, in his house, half so, his knee. You know what I mean? So sad. I think this, we, I think this is right. In my head, it's right. Go on. And if it's not, I'm rolling with it. Um, Big Norm and Cantona are born in the same year. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, 66. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Oh. oh. In big norm 66. Let's have a well, no, because I is two years older than me and I'm 66. No, there is a sort of there's a crossover, isn't there? Because I remember we were talking, was oh, it Sheringham? It might be Sheringham 65, normal white size, yeah. So it's not, might be Sheringham, yeah. I think Teddy probably, yeah. Because we were saying when you think of norm, rightly, you think of the 80s. Oh, and well, those Sheringham 66. Well, look at it, there's a year difference between. Norman Whiteside and Teddy Sheringham. Less than a year, 11 months. Sheringham's older than Norman? No, he's younger. He's, he's 11 months younger. All right. But that's the point, and it? it's like, that's a completely different era. No, Sheringham, Sheringham was playing in the, in the noughties. Teddy Sheringham scores the equaliser in 99. 
99, the end of the decade, yeah. in the treble season. But you think of Norm as just a pure 80s player. Know, whereas yeah. actually, that shows yeah. how much of an impact that he, had. he could have had. He could you know, have had a Premier League. Do you know what Eric Harrison, and we went to a do, um, and a load of lads on the table, all the, all the ex-players, I think Sparky was there. And we said to Eric Harrison before he got ill, who's the best out of all the young players you work with? And he said, Norm on Whiteside. Wow. And that's, I mean, that's with you. Ryan's and your skulls is. Yeah. That's how good he was. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Fergie waxes lyrical about it. Running his books, yeah. he says, like, most gifted. He says he's the best passer, like, yeah. the, the, the actual weight of pass. I mean... I think Cantona was like the one. He said he, he thought about who they're passing to and how it's going to affect the other player, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's sad as well because, for a lot of younger fans, because you don't have that much footage of it, do you? He's he, like... There's a like, bit of a dark There's, age, there's the cup it? finals and the stuff like yeah. that, but a lot of the, you know, the league yeah. games and stuff, there isn't... No, there's not enough footage. Yeah, there's not enough footage. No. I mean, no. unless you were there, you weren't watching it. Yeah. So a lot of it's lost. That was literally yeah. what the Premier League changed. Yeah. When yeah. it broke away and made the new rules, it changed it to, to broadcast the matches, yeah. didn't it? That was yeah. literally why. Because it, it took me a while. It, it took me talking to Martin Edwards about it as well, because I yeah. never even realised that in a league game, like, you know, we're playing Burnley this weekend. On a normal league game pre-Premier League, we give Burnley half our gate. Really? Yeah. Right. Never knew that. Right. Whereas the Premier League, you keep your gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, Mad. you mates with a lot of the players, but you also know or knew Matt Busby as well. Yeah, which through, is in the through the girlfriend at the, at the time, and uh, it was really close with the family. Yeah. But I didn't realise. Um, I got invited for a Sunday lunch, and what? at the Four Seasons with... with I know. <laughs> no, so <laughs> I said who's going, and she What's said... What's going on here? She said, my mum and dad, and... Um, Siobhan's sister and Uncle Matt and Auntie Sheena. Oh, just Uncle Matt. Yeah. Uncle Matt. But I think you know, Uncle hell. Matt's a painter and decorator. <laughs> Trumpsel, you know. And I get there and wet water on the corner and it's Matt Busby. And I couldn't eat my meal. I'm like, no, I, I'm not, I, don't, I think I'd be the same. Like, <laughs> couldn't believe you're not, it. You're not swallowing your food there, are you? Come on. I couldn't believe it. So I got home that night and there was no mo no mobile phones and I rang Billy Garton up because he's like, as I say, with my close pal, I said, Billy, never guess who uh, Uncle Matt is. And then he went, who? I said, it's Matt Busby. And he went, oh, the depths you'll go to get a game for United. <laughs> 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 I think I just told you to fuck off and hung out. Like, yeah. No, it was, it was oh surreal, really. But I was so fortunate to get to know him um, really well. Yeah. Which never spoke about football, but really? spoke about loads of different... And as I say, I started calling him Uncle Matt after a, a year or so, you know. You say, that's he, it was, for me, it was a, a blessing, you know. What a treat. He didn't speak about football with you or in general, was it? Was it? I never asked him about no, I don't think he even knew that I was a boot cleaner, you know? Really? Yeah, I don't so think he had so never, yeah. boot cleaner. Come on. Yeah, How does that, hang on, you're an apprenticeship <laughs> at United <laughs> yeah. and you don't yeah. think, I'll just tell like, at the time, no, the only like, that's, that's that's ever had. severe modesty there, Nicky, I'd have been like, no. oh, by the way. No, what I was going to say, oh, if I was played professional for United, it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Are you, are you not like absolutely chewed his ear off for a tip or yeah. anything like that? Like, oh, no, by the way, you know, I've still got my boots if you know anyone. No, I remember him you saying... You never even say like, what do you do? And you're like, oh yeah, I'm... I'm at your no, I, 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 I itched to, to like ask him things, but I just yeah. didn't. I just, and I used to... He used to sing this, this song, I Belong to Glasgow, and I learned that off him. And we used to... I've got photographs like my arm around him singing it and got on really well with him. Um, and I went to the funeral when he died, which was... That was really another surreal one. That um, yeah. Bestie was sat in the actual pew behind me, like in tears, and I'm like thinking, "Am I actually here?" At my, you know. And then obviously the story that I mentioned before, which on the runway, which is in the book, which yeah. the Busby um, Janie uh, Gibson, his granddaughter, said, "Yeah, if I put this in." Can you can we talk about that? Because I haven't I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah, well, I. Um, after the Everton game, I don't know if you would you remember that when he was yeah, when with he the, passed away with, with the Piper. The Piper, yeah. yeah. We, I remember yeah. old in Tenerife starting the paper. Yeah, no, yeah. I remember I remember going out. I remember there was the silence and I think you could yeah. hear there was two people coming in late. Yeah, you could hear them. It yeah. was like Do you remember? there was a fifteen minute silence, yeah. really, weren't there? Yeah. And yeah. it was like two people coming up like the stairs and you could yeah. hear them talking. You could hear them talking. Was and the Everton fans were great, weren't they? Fantastic. I think Joe Royal said we had no right to win that game. No. <laughs> He gives his score, I think. Yeah, the man, yeah. Joe Rose, the manager, and he said we, we you know, we weren't winning yeah. that one, rightly so, or something, because it was just, it was, yeah, it was surreal. Because I was, I was only, I was fourteen, I think, at the time. But we went down the ground with our shirts and stuff, and my dad was in bits, and you know, I just yeah. saw the, the, the just flowers and shit yeah. grow, and you know, just in no. bits, yeah. and it was just, it was surreal. But it to was. be at the funeral, and 
Well, what, what I did there, what I, I, I took um, my father-in-law um, back after the game, took him because he was friendly with him. Um, get back to his house. He had a little bar in his house that he'd built and he said, you're coming in for a drink? So I said, yeah, I'll come in for a drink. And um, Sheena um, Gibson, Sheena Busby, yeah. just sat there. So I like, I mean, I was dead close with her as well and I had to give her a hug and say, I'm so sorry. And I said, um, she said, well, I couldn't go today because obviously until we put him to rest and... So I said, "Oh, Sheena, you you wouldn't believe the you wouldn't believe the atmosphere today, and the, it was it was like a, a funeral without a body, really, wasn't it?" Yeah. And she said, "Oh, no, I couldn't go." And then she started telling me a story um, the night before that Harry Gregg knocked on the lived in Harbour Road in Sale and knocked on the door, and she answered it. And it's Harry Gregg, and he said, "Can I see the body?" And and then he starts telling her they got the whiskey out, and he starts telling the story about what happened on the runway, which I remember the airs on the back of my neck going up. That uh, oh, sorry. Mm. So, uh, yeah, and he said, I went, and your dad was on the tarmac and said, I broke my bastard back. He said he never swore um, and said, get back in that plane. And he sent him back in. And he said, whatever you, the boss said, whatever your dad said, we did. And I'm like, oh, my God. So, so these, these are, as I say, the, the personal stories I know, but, um, yeah, as I say, the, the Busby family said they're happy for me to tell it. But to actually hear it at first hand... So um, he's there on, with a broken back on the runway. Yeah. And the first thing you think is everyone else. Yeah. Hmm? The first oh. thing you've... Uh, the both yeah. from he said, he said, leave me be. He said, leave me be. So as I said, he's a... And Harry, you know, Harry Gregg, I think people are realising that what he did is incredible. You know, to have survived a plane crash and you've... Go you know, back in. Get your ass in there and, yeah. and start rescuing people. Do you know the mad thing is about that as well when you see the... the Air disaster. I mean, the, like Bobby Charlton was playing a few weeks later, wasn't he? Yeah. And was it? Was it, was it was, Charlton took a bit of time. Well, off, a bit of time. Know, but what I'm saying is, some Bill of the folks did. Yeah. Bill Fox and Harry Gregg. Yeah. Imagine imagine was it like the Sheffield Wednesday game, whatever it was? Can you imagine that now? No, no, no. no they be like counselling for yeah, like twelve right, months. Yeah, yeah and, and, and to be honest, they probably should. And rightly so. Yeah, rightly so. Yeah, absolutely. But to be playing, basically, you know, ten days later, whatever it was. Listening to my granddad talk about that game, he just says there was like a weird very low sort of murmur and then random bursts of just the entire crowd crying. I can't imagine I it. I don't want to imagine no, it. No, exactly. No. But um, that's our heritage, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, 100%. And it's and important. People yeah. do remember it and do yeah. acknowledge it. And you know. I'm assuming you never asked Martin anything about Munich. No, I, could, no, I couldn't. No, no. I didn't even ask him anything about the European Cup final or anything. No. I remember him telling me that he, he, he got drunk for the first time when he was 22. And his mum went mad and said, whatever you, will you be doing next, Matthew? I, said, I was 22. I think he'd been in the army. Oh, heroin, mum. You know I mean? Christ. <laughs> Do you know, like stories like that, but no football. 22, yeah. Yeah. But as First I said, like what, said a, been in the army, what a lovely man. And I, I say it in the book, Sir Alex reminds me so much of him. And yeah. Sandy Busby said that to me. He said, it's like listening to me, dad. And I think they're obviously from the working class areas and the, the, they're very similar in terms of the, their ideas and the philosophies on life you know and obviously the two best people that have ever well and well the made our club, club and, 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 and you yeah. know you talk about sort of the dream nicky and as a, as a united fan to, to play for united to get to know matt busby and to have to get to know Alex ferguson as well it's yeah, like, yeah that is yeah. the no I'm that's the holy grail really isn't it? as i say he's it's, it's, it's such a down to earth just the normal just normal people aren't they yeah just, i think i think that's why in my humble opinion i mean that's that was part of why he did so well, Sir Alex. Yeah. Because he treated everyone the same and it didn't matter. The, the Carrington, they didn't have a first team say, well, if you were if you're washing the kits or cutting the grass, you sat next to Ronaldo or Rooney. I think I remember reading something about how when they got the architect's drawings, they were like, right, so that's the staff canteen and that's the player canteen. And he was like, oh. Fucking think so. Yeah, oh, no. that's the captain. <laughs> exactly. And it's all you all. It's teamwork, isn't it? It's, yeah. And I believe Klopp did it at Liverpool, and he right. Right, didn't say he introduced all the you know, which is should be the norm, really, shouldn't it? Yeah. But Rio's but, mentioned it like um, United be playing Liverpool at the weekend. Yeah. And Klopp uh, and Fergie's talking to like the the laundry ladies. We got a big game this weekend. Yeah. And you're like, I know. 
Chalky well, said the same. Everyone's yeah. on the same level, yeah. aren't they? And that, that's that's how it should be in life, shouldn't it? Whether you're a prince or a pauper, you, we're all the same, aren't yeah. we? Why am I getting a bollocking? Yeah, that's what. <laughs> that's what he yeah. said. Yeah, he, he, he lost up. to Liverpool. He'd, everyone would get it, not just the players. Yeah, the logic. Is that. But talk a little bit about Charles Ferguson because some people may <clears> sort of be wondering about that, how that came about and getting to know Charles yeah. Ferguson and. And what oh, yeah, like. seems so, yeah, you you were kind of gone before Fergie came. Oh yeah, so. he, he came the year after I, uh, yeah. when he didn't have the pleasure of uh, sacking me really. <laughs> well, it might be different. He might have seen uh, yeah, yeah, the, what the wrong, big yeah. wrong miss. I'm sure he would have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm friendly with Jason, um, his son, yeah. and his his own son uh, Jake is the same age as my son. So I ended up running my lad's football team, and then Jason said, "Can I, Jake?" Join. And I said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." So the first game, who turns up watching on the side, his granddad. And I'm no, like, no pressure now. No, so I'll be, I'll <laughs> what's that like? Not for you, but like, are you observing everyone else go, fucking hell, that's Fergie? No, he's, he, no, he's, he's, he's great. He's just not, he's normal, isn't he? He's like anyone else's no, granddaddy. He's, he's not to, normal. Well, he's, yeah, <laughs> he is, but I, like, my reaction wouldn't have been normal. I'd have been if like, I'm no. watching the my kids were the worst because the kids all went to pot thinking they're going to get scouted. <laughs> And I remember the fullback going over and he, and he stopped the ball and kicked it back and he like picked it up and noticed it was him. He dropped the ball. He's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine though. like some people that just go, yeah, cool. Yeah, but I imagine some people just fall to pieces and can't think of anything else. Well, it's no. like go home and forget to take the kid with them. Yeah. No, you never, you never. I mean, you get some. If anyone that's run a kids' football team will tell you that you get the parents saying, "Ah, Jimmy should be inside right. He's yeah. not playing." But he, he never ever. T- well, you'll have to read the book really in a way. But he did tell me one good sell. One, yes. one stuff. No, seriously, because it is. <laughs> nice. I nearly Nicely called. Done. I nearly called the book. Goals change games because. There was one particular game where we were getting beat 2 0. And my uncle was stood with him, my uncle Al, and he said, Come on, Nick, get him going. And we had to win this game to win the league. It's under 13s, this, by the way. Right. So I said, Ah, oh, no, Alan. I said, they, they bottled it today, the other team, had, like what, Frit Moore. And there was loads of the family had come to watch, and there was probably a few hundred people. I said, I don't think they're going to do it. And he's, he's, he walked past and he's like, Grabbed grab my arm, and uh, he went, Nicky, goals change games, like looks in my eyes. Yeah. So I'm like, Fergie has. Fergie. So I'm like, honest to God, I swear to God, I was inspired. Yeah. And I actually went, thank God. I would, I would, no, no wonder you sort of won in the new camp and all that. Yeah. There's me getting the white flag out. So I've gone up to the halfway, I've got the subs to warm up and I've like made a few subs. I'm like, took him off and took him off. 10 minutes later, I'm four down. I'm scared to walk past him. <laughs> no, I'm just, well, I'm scared to walk past, but <laughs> it was mad when I did speak to him again. And like, anyway, we won the league that day and, he, and United won the league. And he was being interviewed, um, I think at MUTV or whatever. And he said we were on the golf course. Um, and he went, no, he said I was watching my grandson and they won the league. So we're in this clubhouse and all the kids are jumping up and down. So we actually won it because one of the other teams in Withinshaw didn't win. So Ah, so he was more focused on that. Than yeah, but he didn't say we got beat 5-0. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, as I said, so that you was just got to know him through <laughs> Yeah, through that, through that. And, um, That's insane. Yeah. But as I say, he's, he's just a dead down to earth guy, the same as Matt Busby. You know, I think I, I do believe that's that's part of the success of these people because they're so grounded. And yeah. I think you, I mean, I don't know Jose Mourinho, but you just feel as though there's an ego with some of the other people, you know. As well with Fergie, though, there's that element of not leaving things to chance, which you know a little bit about. With his was his son giving him a tip for the ninety nine. Uh, the, the penalty. Oh yeah, Jason told yeah. me a story. Yeah, um, he, he worked for Sky TV and looked at all the Burkamp penalties, and then told his old fellow said, "They tell Michael if um, if they get a penalty to go left." Kind of helpful, that. Isn't it? So they sort of, sort of made a little bit of a difference that one, didn't it? Seconds or so. Yeah, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, that's well, they said if mad. if if. if um, Arsenal winning like 3 0 or 4 0, he was pinging them all over. But if it was against Tottenham, it was a really important game. He always just slotted it to the. <sighs> See, that inside info. Right, it makes go. all the difference. That's what I mean. It's like, it's not just the fact you're an amazing manager and coach, and, but everything. 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 everything Nothing left to I mean, chance. That, was a, I mean, that, yeah, that season was frightening, wasn't it? Everything well, this is the good thing about the book as well, Nicky, because there's the bit about you having these, you know, knowing Busby and knowing uh, Sir Alex and, and being at United, but also as a fan. Yeah, You're well, talking like, about it, going to these yeah, games and, yeah. you know, getting well, yourselves just, in, in a bit of a state now and again with your mates. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> um, it's five decades of following United yeah. from the second division, the ups and the downs. I mean, I've talked about more of the good games than the bad games, you know. But <laughs> What's that been like for you as well, seeing all that, just coming through that and seeing through the, the, the sort of the 70s, the 80s and being 
I loved the seventies and the eight, yeah. oh, the seventies was amazing with Tommy Dock. When they went down, everyone wrote United off, and yeah. the fans were unbelievable. I mean, that's the thing with United fans, the real fans. Yeah. When the chips are down, they get behind. And when we went to Forest, when Mark Robbins scored, they had a yeah. The amount of United fans went to that, and we were, they reckon, as I say, if we didn't win that game, it might have been. But Fergie talks about that, doesn't he? He said Martin phoned him the night before and he went, no matter what, you, you're not going. safe. And I think that'd be the case. But the, the fans also, I've seen with Sexton and people, <coughs> when they do turn on a manager, I think it's hard for the board not to. Right. Do you know what I mean? But is that, they, is they, they that, is that what happened with Dave Sexton? Was it the, the yeah, fans? Yeah, the fans were like, oh. Because yeah, on paper, the, you can look at it and go, wasn't that news. bad? It's like the Emperor, like when I, yeah. once, the, once Old Trafford turns. Um, but the. the I, I think, as I say, the, the proper United fans, not not the glory seeker ones. Yeah. The the, the proper fans always stick stick with us, don't they? The ground's a good barometer. It did go more so with Jose, I think. I think because yeah. Jose is quite an intense guy, and I think everything's intense with him. When it's going well, it's intense, but when it's going bad, it's intense yeah. about him as well. And I don't think you ever get any middle ground with him. No. And I think by the time he had to go, he had to go. Yeah, I'm not sure he was the United manager. I mean, it's we've been we were spoiled, weren't we, with Sir Alex? Ridiculously so. But I, I think all the foundations were in place there, and 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 I, and I think the, obviously the other managers came in and they ripped it, they ripped the Carrington apart a bit. Yeah. I think what Ollie's doing now is putting that back in that them same philosophies that I bet there's no first team table and I bet this mm. you know what I mean. Yeah. I think he put back what um, he's like his Red Fergie's. Cheat sheet almost, didn't it? Well, it was, it worked, yeah. didn't it? If it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm. You know? And, you know, and, you know, he used to say that if he wins us one title, it's a phenomenal success. Oh, well, wouldn't you love that? We were just saying before. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> I waited 26 years for it and it was like frightening people were in tears and you couldn't believe yeah. it. It was. No, that was what I was saying. That, like the same thing, what seeing me, that's what my dad and his mates just like that. Literally, yeah. you know, hardened United fans who like crying because they waited so long and seen. The Scouts has won it so many times in that time exactly. as well. And yeah, and you don't, the longer it goes, it'll become the Holy Grail, won't it? Yeah. Which, we, which we don't. My dad last saw us win the title when he was seven. My dad, when he was seven. And then the first one after that was when I was 11. I know. You know it's insane. That's very it? similar to mine. Like, like, yeah, my dad was a similar <coughs> thing. Like, yeah. my, but probably must be the same age. Born in 60, man. Yeah, same. Yeah, my dad is there. That makes sense. Though. It'd be lovely to see Maguire lift it, wouldn't it? Oh mate, seriously. Do I, I think I'd be happier seeing lift it, Marcus. Yeah. Well, mate, absolutely. I, I, I don't care if it's Diallo. Well, I do care if it's Diallo. Yeah. It'll be years away, but I don't care. Who it is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Lee Grant can lift well, it as long as it's for United. I'm saying it'll be in the next three years, <laughs> won't it? Then I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I think you could do. Yeah, and if it's not, Ollie will will probably have been moved on if that's the case. Yeah, I think. But I think if he is trying to follow that model, that obviously works so well with Sir Matt, that obviously yeah. has worked so well with Sir Alex. Yeah. You know, that's who, if that's who we are, that's who we are. And the youth policy, I mean, that's been built since Buzz on it, that bringing the kids to it. We should be so proud of that. No coincidence, is there, that our no. two most successful periods both coincided with heavy youth involvement in the yeah. first team. Yeah. You know, arguably our three most, because I think, you know, you had Busby's Trinity team. Yeah. But I think his babes were. Yeah. You know, they, they were European champions on ground, weren't they? Let's be yeah, real. Yeah. So apparently what happened, I mean, my, era, I, my youth team got beat by City in the Youth Cup. Lancashire Youth Cup at Old Trafford in 85, that was. And um, that was 3-1. <clears throat> Fergie came the year after, and he actually said, why have City got so much better team than United? Because he said, there's obviously 10 players that went through from that era too. I think Lee Martin and Gary Walsh went through. And they said, oh, they've got six scouts. And when United had two in Manchester after it. <laughs> Fergie went and got 18 scouts. He got everyone. And he used to go to all the Monday... Monday night and Thursday night training with Archie Knox and that what he was doing there was building that class of 92 really yeah and he, so he foundations. built the success in a way on youth yeah definitely because people forget that almost only sometimes that how long term it was and you talk about the pressure of the Forest game and things like that but behind the scenes he's laying the foundations yeah and, and that's what Martin exactly. had said was yeah. he could see the work behind the scenes and, yeah. and believed in it yeah so he was going looking at kids and training with them and all the 13 year olds you know what I mean so it was I think it was um, in his one of his first press conferences as United manager. I think he said it's not just about the team; it's about the club. Yeah, you know, I'm not yeah. just there about the first team. Yeah. I'm here for the cl about the club. Yeah, yeah Jose United's was club. the opposite. Was yeah, but Jose didn't. Yeah, for a time there was no striker in the 23s. Scott McTominay was playing striker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Jose was. 
behind the scenes, I believe, was asked, look, can we just sanction like 100 grand for us to go and buy this kid who's, yeah. who's at Stoke or something like that, just so the rest of the team can start developing. He's like, I've got to sort of first team. Don't yeah. come to me with that. Yeah, it's mainly right. That's like you say, it doesn't... I mean, there was a time when, you know, Josie had won his trophies and he liked to... I enjoyed it, but... Never felt long term, did it? Never felt like this no, is a United no, no manager. Longevity. That's what I'm saying. Long-term. I mean, you know, Lo- Oli loves United. Of I mean, there's a, one of his backroom staff, Matt Dempsey, played in the, the stay majors, Sparky and Norman and that. Yeah. From Crumsell, loves United. He, he's there and he's he's got a team behind that. Are, you know, if um, you know, Carrick and Fletcher in there as well. Yeah, they, they're not just fly by nights. And um, yeah, I think I've, hopefully, as I say. No, and people criticise him for that, but you got to look at what Fergie's backroom staff was. You know, Sonobi was yep. in there. Well, oh, fuck it. Sonobi <laughs> is now. Yeah, yeah why not? Sonobi, yeah. Yes, um, let's, let's have it right. You know, it there, was, be. there was a ton of other players that got... I mean, Brian Kidd was literally yep. your Darren Fletcher of the time, wasn't he? he? Kiddo used to, when I was there, used to come... He was on the dole and used to come training with the youth team at, at um, the cliff. You know, he was doing nothing. I mean, I've, what a waste. <laughs> so I, th- I, think, uh, I think Fergie sent him around all the... European clubs, Milan and all that, look at their training methods. Really? I mean, yeah, Ajax and everyone, and then brought him back. But, I mean, what a waste for him to be joining in and being on the rock and roll, you know? Yeah, it's mad. It's, it's, mad. it's insane, isn't it? Yeah. What, what was it, Nicky, that made you decide, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all this down, I'm going to put all this down on paper, get Because, obviously, you've got such a... You've had such a story to tell, it's such an entertaining book, but what was it that made you think, right now, in like... I'd started it's in the time. head 16 years ago. Started. Right. I went to a do at Ellen Road, uh, got invited ever sheds uh, through business, and I got there and it said Rod Atkinson guest speaker. So oh. I'm like, bloody hell. Did, so you get... did you remind him what he did to you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so about 400. Anyway, I'd seen one of the lads I knew from, from work and all that, and I got chatting, got, had a pint, and I said, I used to play a bit of football. I said, I said he was so modest it's ridiculous he, he isn't was it me, he was my guy hey, I used to clean boots I used to play oh, a bit of football yeah, I used to play oh, a bit of football I'm yeah. on the stage yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. you best mate so, so I must be an old don't worry about it yeah. Yeah. He, he, he said to a couple of the other fellas who was sitting on our table well, Nick played at United and blah, and they said what was Ron like and I said he was alright but I said he had a sunbed in his office which he did at the cliff he had <laughs> a sunbed <laughs> which I always remember a few times it'd be like teaming down and you'd be like running around and then the blue light would come on and you're thinking shouldn't he be watching us you know yeah, he's yeah. a great manager don't get me wrong so at this <laughs> do they had a Mike, Lee Sharp was there and McClellan from Wick Rangers and then some proper ex-pros and yeah. they'd, they'd taken this mobile mic saying say something to Ron and then he's come around I've got me back to play in the cheap seats at the thing and he's gone and this young lad here wants to say something and because I'd told him about the sunbed it put the mic and I went, oh, if you got off your sunbed and had a look, I might have had a chance. <laughs> so <laughs> so he's obviously been primed, so he's gone, well, sure, I was wrong about Platy. I was, I was obviously <laughs> wrong about you. Everyone's laughing their head off. So Fred Eyre, who, who's from Worsley, my dad played at Wigan with and all that, he came over after and he went, that was funny. And I said, I didn't mean to, it was funny, I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrote a book years ago, a bit like, and he went, write a book, write a book like me, take the mickey out yourself. Tell the stories because you've got behind the scenes. So, as I say, I, I started right. I went on all day about two weeks later. Started writing the book, and I knew it in my head, but I couldn't. And then met John Ludden and told John he went, oh, "I like the sound of that. I'll help you get it over the, the line." So we used to meet in the Nag Zed or the Circus Tavern with John. Yeah. Telling him the stories, then he put it all down on paper, and that's that's where it's come from, really. So he's been a massive part in helping get it over the. Big shout out to John Ludden and Christopher yeah. Eccleston as well for well, doing yeah, the Yeah, and he's been brilliant because, as I say, his dad had dementia. Yeah. He's played centre forward. Um, he's really supported it. And he actually said in it, and this is what I've had a few messages, he said it could be me, this, as a kid, because you're all in the Stretford end, are you? Yeah. And I've had loads of people saying, God, it's just like my upbringing. It's what, it's, you know. Well, this is, that is, it is. I'm 50-50, mate. Do I get the audio books? I love Chris Eccleston. I love Chris Eccleston. I, I, think, I think so, but. Um, I'm I'm do I read it myself? I don't know. Either Chris way. Eccleson's ones. Uh, I mean, he's he's from Little Alton. He his school was next to mine, and we 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 like a year apart. Didn't know him, but knew all the same lads. So he, he's like he's gone. He really got in the, the the zone, you know. Did a did a blinding job of it. I think it's it's it is a great read, and you're so sort of funny and self deprecating. Like so, you can see it now in this interview. You know, he's play a bit and. I used to clean no, because like you know, but I remember like, I can't get over knowing Matt Busby and not once my him. Not about one, oh yeah, <laughs> like, 
that's you know I get it because it's like well, I think you've got to respect <clears throat> them, haven't you? Yeah, it's, you know it's more. To be honest, we had a struggle to get all people. seven together. If it was good point, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think I've been pestering or asking him anything. I've just been sort of sat, just nodding and laughing at his jokes. Um, <laughs> but no, it is a great read. No, it the, really is, Nicky. And, and like I say, for me, the stuff about the sort of seventies and eighties is just sort of a little bit before my time as a fan. I love all that, and some of the characters yeah. are in it as well. Yeah. So I mean, it's probably well, well, as well. So well. Alex actually loved the seventies. Yeah. Just said I loved the seventies and eighties. I mean, there's one game that where this um, this lad from Garton who I eventually met, who was more um, chuffed to meet him, not more chuffed, but up there with the, the Busbys and the Fergies. That I went to seventy seven in uh, Hillsborough. And there was this ape who kept uh, crowd surfing United in the United end and yeah. all that. And I remember saying to me, Dad, they'd so I said, Dad, what's that? And he went, an ape. I know it's an ape, but it's like, it's not. What do you mean an ape? So I met him on a building, I met him on a building site years later. Well, he said to me, we got chatting about real? United. <laughs> yeah. And he went, did you go to the 77 uh, semi-final? I went, yeah. He said, do you remember the ape? And I went, yeah. He went, that was me. <laughs> and I'm like, no way. <laughs> And he started, he started telling me a story about it. That they, come, they went in a Salford van, I van, and they couldn't get parked. They're from Garton, and they couldn't get parked at the United end of the, the, the ground. So they said, oh, we'll go in the Leeds park because it has, like, Manchester and Leeds number, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, they went, they, they, they steamboats on the booze, and uh, <laughs> after they get, they all took the scarves off get, get through the Leeds end, getting the thing, and he said, after the game, they all took the scarves off, but he said, I'm forgetting I'm an ape. Goes around the car, <laughs> the leads of Lord of Leeds mob have gone. There's that United ape got battered. Really? Oh, <laughs> what's an ape? I'm, I feel <laughs> daft here. A guy in an ape costume, a gorilla. And all oh, right, like I know it sounds crazy <laughs> that someone would go to a football match in a gorilla got outfit. Got me ticket. Got me keys. Yeah, where's my ape costume? Did it as a bet? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I've, I've heard. Because I thought I didn't know this if before. this was like no. no it's, <laughs> the Garton, the Garton Grilla, he's dead well known. Like, uh, can we? I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? I can't see the screen. All right, okay, yeah. So that's sort of the, the things that went down in the 70s. Yeah. So it was like, well, you know, like Steve was saying, yeah, make sure you've got your keys and you've, you've got your... Uh, gorilla your, You've got your gorilla costume. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't believe he forgot he had it on as well and he's getting his... Uh, is that kicked in? Um, there's a few <laughs> loads of questions coming in for you, uh, Nicky. We'll, we'll try and power a couple. Uh, someone, uh, the old Lord says, has Nicky ever met Franco Farrell? I met him and he's a really humble, nice man. <clears throat> no, um, no, that was... Any, oh, here's one for you, Nick. Any European away trips, funny stories? Just a few. We were talking about 91, weren't we? Yes. What, can, oh. we can we so remember let, it? Now, now we can that. talk. Go on. <laughs> 91. <laughs> Only the greatest oh, achievement loads. by this football game. Hey. I know, that was a great trip. All roads lead to Rotterdam. Right yeah. Yeah, the, the, the train. Oh, brilliant. That was a great trip. I had loads, really. I mean, you, the thing is, on the European trips, you, you can't remember half of them because you're like on the keg, aren't you? But uh, obviously, the the new camp was frightening, wasn't it? It was, it was meant to be, wasn't it? In 99, but, yeah. on some Mount's 100th birthday. You can't yeah. make it up, can you? You can't um, write that. C. Joe James John says, who all among the current players does Nicky rate as United Standard? What do you think of the current crop? Nicky, do you think they Well, Shaw's been great, hasn't he? Yeah. Obviously, our lad from within Shaw's a good one, isn't he? Marcus, yeah. Yeah. I do you know, I think, um, I mean, I like Cavani. I wish we'd had him a few years ago. I, I like, I'm a bit old-fashioned like that. I like an old-fashioned centre-forward who puts himself old. about. Yeah. I and wish it, we could keep him for a couple more I, years. I, I do. We're gonna. I do, no. And I love the work rate. I think the thing is with a lot of United fans, if the players work hard and put it in, you can all have a bad day at the office, can't you? But it's... Um, I mean, Shaw, Shaw's been fantastic, and Bruno. I mean, you know he's passing sometimes, but he, his work rate is. I mean, that's Fergie's team. They all work like Beckham, Giggs. They work the socks off, yeah. don't they? They're yeah. talented. It's, it's, it's underrated that about the work ethic. Yeah. I think Beckham people go, you know, he's just a sort of spice boy type character. Yeah. The guy was a grafter. He was yeah. mint as well. So yeah. you know, Giggs as well. You know, um, I, I remember once got up to Park in a League Cup, with four 0 down yeah. in the ninety third minute in a League Cup. And this is like probably 2000, 2009 or something, 2008. Yeah. Giggs has won the lot. And he's chasing the ball in the 93rd minute. And it's snowing as well. I know. Just to add to it, it's well, I, I think we got out of the Just habit that, of that. that attitude. With Van, with Van Gaal and Jose. I think they walked games, didn't they? Yeah. And they can't. weren't as fit as they are now. No. Ollie's gotten fit again. Well, that was a big thing you had to do, wasn't it? Yeah. You get that yeah. fitness going because... It's tempo, isn't it? I yeah. mean, United, for me, ever since I was a kid, it's all about tempo. It's just, everything should be quick. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's what we, you know, that's what we grew up on. Grew up on. Yeah, but that's it. the United Way. It is the United Way. It is. It's relentless attacking, and it's people want to call it pressing and gag and pressing and this, yeah. that, and the other. But since I was six and seven years old, going watching United, yeah. we pressed. You, know, you was always on someone's touch. You yeah. never let anyone turn. Just because it's got a new fancy name doesn't mean it's a new thing in football. Yeah. You know, you tell Mark Hughes. This is Gagan no, pressing the blind. No. Been doing it since I was a boy. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. second half against Spurs was like United, wasn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And it, I think they obviously got the ump a little bit about the the off the goal that was disallowed. But we should be doing that all the time. Yeah, anyway. maybe that give us a little bit of a yeah. Oh, there's um, Santa Notch says Nicky, how much more could United have achieved in the eighties without so many injuries? Do you well, think that cost true. us the title? The injuries? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got to remember, they were pretty muddy. Once you got to sort of November time, I think the Old Trafford and even the training ground, the cliff, you, they, were, they were like quadmires. Even that main pitch in front of the offices? Yeah. Because that's like Wembley, that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's like it is now, but not then, because they were getting trained on every day, and you don't know whether that had any... Yeah. I mean, it's a different game. It's like the, the science wasn't there, was it? You know? No. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, we, were, we had a right good chance, didn't we, with... When we went, I think we won. I was in Malaysia at the time, but I think they won the first 12 games, United. In yeah, we went on Not on TV, was it? Because there was some sort of weird yeah. broadcast blackout. And then I think they went away for a weekend to New York and near the end, <laughs> the team and everyone blamed that. <laughs> That's Ron, that, innit? <laughs> yeah, but it, it was good, Ron. You know what? You talk about lads of my age and all that. We had some great cup uh, wins yeah. under Ron and it was exciting. I mean, he, he loved flair. He loved wingers and yeah. it wasn't... It won't bore him with Ron. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it says there, uh, Matt Gabriel, which of the squad now do you think could have played in the 80s? Talk about it being a bit of a different game there. Do you see anyone in the squad now that would have been fine in that era? Well, yeah, I think, as I say, Maguire, probably the left back, would be yeah. all right. Um, Matt Tomlin would be fine. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't he? Yeah. I mean, it was a bit, he was a bit like a Fletcher type player, isn't he? Yeah. Know, at least you know what you're getting. Yeah. Um, I'd, 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 I'd love to see... Pogba going to plough lane at Wimbledon <laughs> with, against Vinnie Jones. <laughs> we was watching, we were talking about him, right? when, we was it when Mark Hughes scored against Wimbledon at plough lane and he's just started like hitting people. Oh, yeah, he slaps about four people in his celebration. Yeah, grabs the ball at the back of it and just like, he's like hitting people on his way out of the, the, the area. Yeah, yeah. It's no, mad. it was mad. mad. Uh, Brian Robson tells a great story about um, doing Vinnie Jones in a challenge that's the worst ever done in his career. <laughs> And he said, and I thought I'd get sent off. He got a booking. <laughs> it was probably a third degree of assault. Word, it was, he said, I let the ball go. And he said, belted him. And he said, he got up. He like, gets up, Vinny. And he starts running towards him. And Rob will think, oh, he's going to knock me out here. And so he said, put my foot back. And he's come straight up to his face and gone, great challenge, Robbo. <laughs> Well, that's a, that was the sort of <laughs> quality. You've seen that. There was a clip going around doing the rounds recently, weren't there, about where Vinnie Jones tried to headbutt Mark Hughes' balls. No, it's like, Keno, wasn't it? When well, he jumps back, even, yeah. he jumps back, yeah. 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 This was like, as well, 94. So it wasn't yeah. as bad as like 87 yeah, yeah. Yeah. or whatever. So yeah, but he, yeah, he, he put, he, he, right in front of the ref, Keen runs behind him and Vinnie Jones jumps back and tries to headbutt oh, him. Mad. And the ref doesn't even give a fine, don't give anything. It's mad. It went off in the tunnel once. I remember Viv Anderson think told me, or oh, whoever, Norman. And <clears throat> it was, it often went, sometimes you get skirmishes and all, but no. this went proper. And he said, all you could hear was Vinnie Jones let me at him. He couldn't get near him because it was so condensed. <laughs> <laughs> he said Vinnie's trying to get over the top to him. But as I say, it's, uh, yeah. <sighs> Listen to these stories all day. Do we, I know. Do we have to? Yeah, wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nicky, you've mentioned there about um, Christopher Eccleston and also John Ludden who's involved and you say some of the proceeds going towards yep. Dementia Charity so as well. It's, it's Sports United against Dementia. Um, my dad, um, who was like me, that played in the youth team at United, yeah. uh, um, was pro and went to Blackburn Rovers then played pro all his life, um, Wigan Athletic. He died, of, uh, he was suffering with Alzheimer's for 14 years, a centre forward. Um, Eric Harrison, obviously, Passed with the same um, nobby. Yeah. Gordon McQueen's got it now. Yeah. Um, I went to Eric's funeral and we're all t talking about it and saying, are we going to be the next generation? Hopefully not, but from heading the ball. So, yeah, I, I firstly feel we need to have the answers. Whether the FA's been a little bit, and the PFA aren't really helping either. They've not really, but maybe they're scared of getting sued or, you know what I mean? You imagine the amount of cases. Um, it's similar to what happened with the concussion stuff in the NFL, isn't it? Yeah, but we should know because I think for the... Obviously, it's too late now for the, the older generation, um, but we should know for the kids and we should know for 
you know, for even the pros now, because the, the training, they probably won't head it as much. I don't know. But that, yeah, so part of the... And that's why the support's been fantastic with that. So... Um, no, it's, it's great that you're doing that as well and, and supporting that cause. And like you say, it's so sad when you hear United legends who are suffering with it yeah. and, and who've passed yeah. away. And, and, and for you guys as well, having that fear, like, are we going to be the next generation? We feel like I need to look into it. But I believe Nobby was very poorly with it towards the end as well. Yeah, yeah it's so sad. Yeah. And Wolf, Wolf, Wolf McGuinness is suffering um, the same. But as I say, it's uh, we should really know, shouldn't we? Scientifically, we should know. Yeah. And then at least you've got the choice then. Yeah, because it's just, like you say, it's just unknown. Yeah. You know, you could, people have it from the 12s. In America, it's been banned for Billy Garton, um, he, he, he coaches in San Diego. Yeah. And for the last 10 years, you couldn't add, if he had the ball as a kid, it's a foul, it's like a handball. But um, as I say, it's just a bit of a grey area, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's weird because I agree with it. But if you've got like the rest of the world not implementing that, no. You're gonna see a, a change in how football's I played, know, and I'm people will buy like I know Serbian centre backs because yeah. they can head a ball exactly. yeah. versus English players. Oh, no, you're right. Look at the Cavani goal on Sunday. Yeah, there's nothing better than scoring a good header. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is you, it. you wouldn't want it out. You wouldn't want it out. Like, you don't want out again. Yeah. You just want, it, yeah. like you say, you want yeah. the research being done and some yeah. answers being done, given. Yeah. Sorry, and people knowing where they stand and what's going on, and, yeah. and obviously people that are suffering as well getting the help. Which is you yeah. Know, what well, some of this sports, going sports United against dementia. They're also looking at grounds as well. That if you wanted to take your old fella or whatever, because you know they get confused, so they're going to look at areas in grounds that. That's um, a great idea. And which Chris Eccleston, Eccleston said to me, I, I, I missed taking my dad because he yeah. had it for like ten years. So it's not just that. So it's it's going to be money well spent. Well, it's a worthy cause, but more you know, it's not just that. It's also. A funny read. Uh, it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it, it's been really well received, is, and I'm, I'm dead chuffed yeah. about that. To be honest, getting the getting the thumbs up from Sir Alex Ferguson when you do yeah, something right. Do you yeah. know what? If you didn't sell a single copy, he'd be like, "Fergie's read my book." Sound. Yeah, Fergie <laughs> likes it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he gave him belief in it. To be honest, because I, I, I was a bit like, "Who wants to read about?" You know, everyone, all United pitch. fans. Yeah, right, well, <laughs> as I say, it's, it's, <laughs> everybody's watching. Yeah, and yeah. I can't wait for the directors cutting about three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Volume two. Thanks for the opportunity, by the way, lads. To, no, thank to you for coming. Make sure you just go and get it, lads. The link yeah. for it is in There's the description below. So yep. go and check it out if you want to go and see it yourselves. And Nicky, thank you for coming on. Thanks very yeah. much, lads. I've enjoyed it. We'll have to have you on again, mate. No worries. A pleasure. Right, subscribe. Go and check out Nicky's book, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.